Hello, my name is Zoe Daly and I'm here talking about the sovereignty goddesses who are the goddess of the Tuatha Dé Um I have a company called Eru who is named after one of the main sovereignty goddesses and we're reclaiming the ancient traditions uh, in Ireland of working with wool. And um, for many years I've been working with um, these sovereignty goddesses as my guides and inspiration and um, I feel they're really coming forward very strongly at this time um, on the planet for, um, for support. So today I was going to talk a little bit about Queen Maeve who uh, for me is like the High Queen of Ireland. There's a lot of talk about the High Kings of Ireland but for me Queen Maeve um, was such a powerful sovereignty goddess, even her name, Maeve, holds so much power. Her name came from, is derived from, they think, um, the word mead, which is this sacred drink that they made and used in ceremony, made from honey. So Queen Maeve is a sovereignty goddess, and I love this card, I was reminded just to show it. It's actually from Alana Fairchild's um, White Light Oracle. And it says Sovereign Queen Maeve. So I love that she's recognised globally as a Sovereign Queen, which she is. And over the past few years, I've been learning more about that from her and about um, how to incorporate her wisdom into my daily life. So for me, these Sovereignty Goddesses that I've been working with and I'm going to be working more with and recording and writing their teachings and meditations, um, they're really vehicles for, there's, there, are, there are many different ones, they're all from the tribe of the Tua de Danon, and they're, they represent different qualities and um, embodiments of the Divine Feminine, ultimately the Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine energies balanced together um, as a Sovereignty Goddess. So they're really um, vehicles for exploring our inner landscape um, to navigate and track what has been lost, damaged, um, and what needs to be restored and reclaimed. So that's how I've been working with them and I'd love to share their teachings um, uh, with you in a helpful way. So, um, Queen Maeve is well known in Ireland. There's so much of our landscape is, is there are many areas in the physical um, land that are named after her, um, all around her, her, the lands of Maeve as they're known in Sligo, which is um, my um, my mum, my mum's home, our ancestral lineage is, is, is from there. Um, there are many areas, even in Tara, there is a Rath Maeve, so, which is a circular enclosure named um, in honor of her. Um, where she is buried is on this well-known mountain hill called Knock Nuray, which is where, where, where her grave sits on top, which is a cairn. And um, interestingly, there's an energy line that runs from right in front of that right through down through Newgrange, which is another very famous sacred site in Ireland. And that energy line actually runs all the way to the Great Pyramid in Egypt, which is very significant. Um, so yeah, Queen Maeve is so powerful. She's known um, in our mythology as a warring goddess, like a warring queen. And it has uh, again, like so many of them, so many of these powerful divine feminine embodiments from our history have been, you know, desecrated, diminished. Um, I even found like this little kid's book, which I bought a few years ago, you know, to show my daughter. I was like, oh, it's on Queen Maeve. And so disgusting, really, like the picture of it, just the way it was described, her story. Um, it was so negative. It was like describing this toxic feminine, which is actually what Maeve is here as her main wisdom is to teach us about um, this balance between masculine and feminine energies and how when this is out of balance that it goes into these toxic energies, toxic feminine and toxic masculine. 
and her and it's ironic herself has been distorted but it's just it's also to be expected a lot of these great powerful embodiments you know just have been disempowered like this so she's she's known as a warring goddess and um one of the main myths in our in our mythology is around this war that happened um supposedly led by Maeve um on our against our one of our greatest warriors Ku Cullen who um was a great warrior and I believe there's a whole other story there they the sovereignty goddess is kind of tell me to go back and look at these stories and see what's been distorted what has been changed um so there's a lot there that I won't go into that I believe but essentially um she did go to war um against forces in the land and what I believe she was doing was she was defending um the sacred marriage principle she was when she was here in Ireland, um, she's shown me how they worked, uh, uh, as well as many of the sovereignty goddesses. They worked in harmony with their masculine counterparts. They worked in community. They worked often, I believe Maeve was running um, schools, um, temples of priestesses and, and priests where they were upholding this sacred marriage principle of a balanced divine masculine feminine within themselves and within partnership and they were using ceremony to ritualize these energies to encode the land to work with the land to um, enhance its vibration to maintain its vibration um, and working a lot in joyful ceremony and blissful ceremony using sacred drinks of mead and um, enacting these ceremony these rituals um of honoring this rightful balance which w is very much the opposite of our our world today which which was you know a matriarchal lineage like so many of these ancient um ascended civilizations they um they in the two Adidanin, anyway, they honoured the divine feminine as the leading principle. Um, so the masculine honoured this feminine birthing principle and really was in his own embodiment of masculinity, of divine masculinity, um, in, you know, strong, holding a strong sense of self-worth, um, benevolence, um, courage, all those beautiful divine masculine um, protection, um, enabling um, the birthing and creative and expansive intuitive oracular qualities of the feminine to really be at peace and to be in their fullest expression. And by enabling and allowing and holding and providing the space for them to do that, this really further empowered the masculine so they really um lived these principles in their feminine and masculine embodiments but only because they had this balance within themselves um so in this war anyway i believe it's about it was about um the splitting of the divine feminine masculine principles i believe essentially it was you know, when these invasions came in, when these attacks, when this splitting occurred with the descension of the earth, all of these descriptions of the same thing. Um, that's what I believe this whole myth is, is about, is, is, is detailing. Um, and I believe what she's shown me, it was like that the, the masculine principle was attacked first, if it was like a virus or an invasion, a raid, actually the, the name in, Arla, in Irish, translates as the raid um which is interesting um and she's shown me that really this was the the masculine aspect um was raided first attacked first like infected first and then when that got infected say that toppled the feminine out of balance and became a power over um the feminine and this was displayed in the story of Maeve and her beautiful king 
um, they were the royal couple of Connacht, the west of Ireland, where they, um, you know, ruled over in a very beautiful way. The community, um, not ruled over, ruled in service to the community, because that's the real definition of royalty. And this whole battle is described as a fight between them in their marriage bed, which she explains to me is really, you know, the description of this splitting of the masculine and feminine, this infection that took place and the installation of a negative architecture splitting technology, essentially. Um, and how this this was described as a fight between herself and her husband over wealth, which really was um, referring to cattle and um, who had more or whatever, which was better. But I, essentially, I believe what she showed me that was referring to her womb and her, the herd, and their ability as the sovereignty goddesses were practicing their ability to birth divine lineages you know, with the assistance of their divine masculines, but they were able to weave in um, parthenogenetically um, birth um, and maintain these royal um, ascended um, a DNA um, and um, higher souls, maintaining these lineages. Um, in the land, especially this is at a time where a lot is changing and there are a lot of um, fighting and wars and battles and um, invasions taking place. They were fighting to uphold these um, these higher um, enlightened, higher vibrational um, beings and to uphold the, that architecture in the in the DNA and in the land. So essentially this this whole myth is about, which has been so turned into Maeve is a warring goddess and she was really bad and, you know, evil and went to battle and um, against our greatest warrior. And she seemed, you know, described as such a negative female where actually she was, she was amazing defender of this sacred principle of um, hierogamic union, divine masculine, feminine, balance and um, that was under attack she was defending it she was defending the sacred feminine principle while it was under attack by the the masculine that got toppled and therefore she was also protecting the sacred masculine principle so she was led to war um where you know, I believe the war was over the DNA and um, the tampering of this and um, the bringing down of this um, union. And many stories follow this, which I believe are kind of all encoded. But the point is, that's what she was fighting for. That's what she was defending. That's when she was upholding, when she was uh, ruling. Um, and when they ruled these sovereignty goddesses, they ruled over areas of the land because they were in such sacred communication with the land. Their masculines really honoured this um, divine feminine principle of oracular ability to commune with the land, know what was needed for the for the land, for the community. And therefore, that's how they they appointed the kings um, and worked in harmony and balance with them. So. Um, Maeve really, how I work with Maeve today, you know, that's what she was fighting for then in that timeline and why she is so strong now also because this is also like, a, you know, this is a, this is such a present wound. This wound is ancient and present at the same time and affects us within our own hierogamic union within and in all of our relationships. So she uh, in, invites me always to examine where this is out of balance within me and in my relationships and, 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 that, and to fight for this, you know, just as she did, that we are fighting for this destruction of this beautiful principle um, 
and we are defending against the, the forces that would destruct that. And we are fighting to reestablish that divine architecture within our own DNA and within our land around us, because once we restore it within, we're restoring it in the land around us. Um, and it really, there is a war going on for our consciousness for these sacred principles um, that is just the same as the wars that were describing her. Um, so um, she is such a powerful, brave goddess to work with. Um, you know, as always, the, God, the sovereignty goddesses are mirroring us and our ability to do the same um, the same as them we can restore these principles the same as 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 them um ultimately you know what her name also coming from this word for me to this sacred drink that they used in ceremony which um for me i feel was like the embodiment the feeling when they drank this drink was you know upholding and restoring this sacred balance within um, ultimately, the union of these hierogamic energies, this masculine feminine balance, um, unifies us with our divinity. That is the that is the whole point of that union coming together. And they how they always did this was by connecting to Mother Earth, um, connecting to their own direct connection to divinity, and um, you know, drinking this drink in ceremony embodying, remembering, encoding their own hierogamic union within themselves as they practiced um, they practiced this within themselves and within couples. Um, only this would this would really only work in couples when the, each one was embodying this own balance within themselves. And then that was such a powerful thing um, when that was that twin flame um, union when they're both in hierogamic union themselves. So, um, so this whole description of the mead is, was this intoxicating drink, intoxicating, I believe, you know, they described that in the history, like of, of these ceremonies and these rituals, that it was this intoxicating drink, like it was just an alcoholic drink that got you drunk, but it was so much more than that. It was a sacred drink that, you know, increased your clarity, your sight, your vibration to feel, remember and uphold these principles. Um, and that whole intoxicating, she is known as the intoxicating one, um, which has been again described in a negative way, but um, I believe it is in, she was practicing this in such a positive way. And also now how I work with her and how she invites us to work with her is to remember that that in rightful balance, those principles are an intoxicating feeling of being aligned with our divinity aligned with our connection to the earth um in that unity unity consciousness um and then when this is out of balance how that goes from intoxicating to toxic um something i was working on recently which i was really struggling with was this um toxic toxic feminine um you know belief system and narrative which i can feel coming down my ancestral line but is also um you know was playing out in a relationship of this feeling of disappointment with the masculine um and, and when that is in play it's it's very toxic it results in toxic behavior results in resentment and toxic comments or toxic feelings towards um you know in a relationship to 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 the other um and i know that when you're at a balance like this it is within so i was really sitting with Maeve, you know examining this wound within myself um and she was showing me that 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 this disappointment with the masculine was is really such an ancient wound and and goes back to this time of this splitting of this hierogamic sacred marriage and she was showing me the disappointment of when that happened to her and her beautiful king who who she adored and how in that infection that invasion that destruction um interference took place the splitting 
that the the wound the feminine was of such you know grave disappointment um that it developed in such toxic belief systems that continue to this present day in our relationships um and that that disappointment that feeling of disappointment is really a sadness she was showing me it's really sadness of 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 the wound of the desecration that happened to this sacred marriage so she showed me how important it was to mourn this that this is real that this is ancient that so many women carry this but also also within ourselves this feminine aspect um and that's also what she reminds me that like fighting for the restoration of these divine feminine divine masculine balances are in every one of us regardless of our gender regardless of our gender preference we all have the ability to defend and restore our own divine feminine and our and our own divine masculine rightful balance and it you know i believe that starts with the the leading of the divine feminine which births the masculine because you know she was showing me that you know even though it it appears say that the masculine wound first and toppled the feminine you know and that's how our, our world is today this um patriarchal society that has you know destructed and suppressed feminine femininity females like throughout the world even though it appears that that's such a suppression of the feminine it's really such a suppression of the masculine it's almost like the wound is worse even though i've always thought uh, you know the women have had it harder you know and and you see that of course they have in many ways and cultures but essentially the masculine isn't winning either because it's a false masculine so essentially to restore this um, it, it feels and it is that they show me that divine feminine comes back online first and then can birth the true divine masculine um, because it's almost like that principle has been further decimated than the feminine in a way and just replaced by this false masculine which caused the patriarchal rule which isn't the real masculine at all um, so so she was showing me, you know, to work with this wound within myself, you know, just to really notice the subtle ways in which this toxicity would play out in me um, through any behavior in the masculine that was making me feel disappointed, that really it's so insidious, this virus of this destruction that say I um, feeling disappointed about a certain thing, which I was, you know, then that narrative, that belief system can really hook me in to lead me down further thought processes of disappointment or, you know, oh, well, um, you know, it's, you know, I'm not getting my needs met by the masculine or it's disappointing, that that can really continue that toxic narrative and what it's ultimately doing to me it's leading me down a path of looking to the outside to to fulfill myself and that's really leading me out of balance really leading me into toxicity of looking for of, of being toxic in my feminine but also and um, leading me out of my own masculine fulfillment within into an expectation of a masculine outside to fulfill me and relying and I've lived, I've had many experiences this in my life in my past where I really had a, 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 the damaged inner masculine and it led me to so many choices where I looked for this fulfillment outside myself in false structures, which never work because then they they actually lead you to more of that wounding of that, that false masculine then controlling or coercing the feminine, suppressing it, that out of that toppling. Um, so she showed me really to really be careful, really watch my own inner landscape when I'm that that belief system gets triggered, which is a collective belief system. You know, also that I don't need to beat myself up for having that belief system, that we're all healing this and bringing it into awareness is healing it. It's an ancient wound. Um, and 
where to pull that back, see where it's leading me. And anytime I'm feeling that disappointed, where can I restore that within myself? Where can I go within and identify, okay, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a fulfillment of certain kind. Where can I resource that from within, from my own inner um, sacred masculine, um, from my own father God, father, father mother, father God sustenance, my own direct connection to divinity. Um, and also helps to track where the wounding happened as well, if it's personal. Um, you know, she led me to those meditations, which are up on one of the videos as well. The chalice meditation, really drawing from that own direct connection to source and the sacred marriage meditation. Unifying and identifying their own, our own divine masculine and feminine principles within ourselves. So it's constant inner work to identify and track when these energies are going out of place and becoming toxic. And it can happen so insidiously. Um, and, and just, you know, that I was, um, um, yeah, and that she showed me like, this is what we, you know, as her aspect as a sovereignty goddess, that we need to be that warrior like her and fight for these principles within ourselves. Fight for upholding them, fight for upholding our own divine feminine, our own um, divine masculine um, balance within ourselves, leading to our own union with our divinity, which is the ultimate fulfillment and our own sacred connection with the earth. Um, Um, you know, that is ultimately, you know, I'm just looking at the card here, the Sovereign Queen wave, that is the ultimate description of sovereignty, is to uphold that balance. And, you know, that's when we're doing that, we're healing the land, we're healing and restoring these grids that have been damaged in this way. And I see that all over Ireland. I feel that, I really feel these got goddesses were there was a lot of sacred encoding of this um this balance in the land for important reasons important reasons that i'm still learning about such as these lines that run from her grave to the great pyramid in egypt and then how these were nodes of destruction and splitting um so so yeah so so and um, that's a bit about Queen Maeve and, you know, she, yeah, one thing I wanted to say was I was sitting with her last night in a meditation. She was showing me this beautiful way they used to work in community, um, you know, they, that they were having these rituals that they were so in harmony with the land. The land was, you know, they would sing to the land, the land was singing to them, every bird, every cloud, every stone they were in communion with speaking to listening to and being guided by in unity with all the realms the fairy realms the animal kingdoms um and as she was showing me how you know it was okay that i was experiencing that hurt of that wound and how she experienced it with her king um and that was real and i was I was talking to her, I was like, oh, you know, that was so hurtful for you too with your beautiful divine king. And she was, she was sitting there and then her king was there beside her and she was saying, yeah, but, but while we experience that, we, we are here now. There, this sacred marriage is still in existence. It always existed because it's the original template of creation of our divinity. Um, and their sacred marriage embodiments, um, Queen Maeve and her king, were there in beautiful harmony saying, you know, this principle exists. It was never destructed. And this is what we're restoring by connecting back to these principles. We are restoring, we're bringing it into manifestation. So that my logical head doesn't understand that, but my soul understood it. Um, that even though these destructions took place in these timelines and these what these myths are describing also it exists 
that this was never destructed and this union is being upheld. And that's where she brought me to last night in my meditation. Witnessing and feeling her beloved um, relationship with her king and his beautiful honouring um, kingliness of honouring her divine feminine embodiment. Um, and how that is just such, um, it's, it's really such a blissful energy to be in. And when that energy then is is being upheld by many in community and 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 with the land, it's it's really um it's really an ascended place, and that's what I believe the two Adidanan were doing. They were upholding the, the um these principles, and that's why I believe they're here now. And especially these sovereignty goddesses to guide us back to this remembrance. You know, she assures me we remember these codes because they always existed, just like our marriage is perfect. Um, they existed, so we're bringing these into remembrance. They already exist. And by doing that, we have to identify, you know, where they went out of place, where they went into toxicity, where that belief system is, is bringing us down these paths. Um, you know, we have to look at the fallen architecture to restore the original architecture, but the original architecture of these these templates, these unions um, were the original form of creation. So we can get back to them. So that's the positive side um, that she always jokes about at the end, you know, that it's, you know, we can do this and we are doing this. And so, yeah, I invite you to, to look at the meditations on this page that I created around this and also just, yeah, to call on Queen Maeve as um, a mirror and to help you identify any places that, you know, you're going into those toxic narratives where essentially we're being brought out of balance. I hope that was um, good. I'm actually going to uh, Sligo where she's, we're back to our ancestral home next week. Um, I can't wait to go and be close to her, um, her land and um, uh, receive more information. So, Thank you for listening.